Well, I suppose the time to talk to the camera is when you don't want to. Um, you know, I mean, this is another form of morning pages and writing and, um, yeah, turning the voice, my thinking voice, my being voice, you know, turning it into material. You know, not, not like I'm short on material. Um, and it's really less, you know what I'm learning? It's, it's less uh, going through old stuff as it is making the latest thing. And it's just like, I just can't do anything but make the latest thing. And it's like, in hindsight, this will be a beautiful thing to look at and see. Because it's true, and I'm I'm helpless in. I don't want to say being an artist. It's too it's too convenient to say that. Um, but being a creative personality, you you just can't go back. It's like anything that is known is boring. It's like I only want to live at the the hatching of something new. Um, And you know, this is totally authentic and it's totally honest and totally modern and totally now. And I could post it tomorrow with this timestamp and it'll be brand new. And this will be the voice, the universal voice. But posting is a way out, right? It's almost the only way out of the hell or this state of being trapped and having to not be logical, not, you know, do work, not have a job, not be predictable. Though I think those are all things that I um, run away from. And I just won't get trapped by them because I, I can always swim away and say the next thing. And, you know, it's like a racquetball and a concrete wall. And just like, I'm going to wear you out, right? I'm the wall. And the racquetball is, I don't know, either go get a job or do something logical or, or what. Um, I don't know. I don't know why this is my obsession, right? But, you know, the poet W.H. Auden said that every writer must act his age. It's frightfully important, he said. Frightfully important to act your age, to not be younger or older than you are. So here I am. I am 33 and two-thirds. Um, I've never been old. Never been older. Never once been older. I'm the oldest I've ever been right now. Um, and I'm not getting younger. Um, but I don't know, you know, I, I imagine, again, a genre of 40 something year old men who do nothing but lament how old they are. (laughs) Um, but I don't know, it's, I find it harder to be young and reckless these days. You know, I mean, today I walked through Golden Gate Park, the panhandle here in San Francisco and... You know, lots of young people out in in circles, you know, drinking, you know, flesh exposed to the sunlight, laughing, sunglasses, music, smoking pot, drinking beer, drinking hard seltzer, music, playing ball games. Um, I've done that. And you can't stay where you are in life. You got to keep going ahead. Um, you know, I, I can't live a life I've already photographed. You know, I mean, those who've uh, kind of read and followed me for a long time, either my writing or my photography. Um, you know, I'm always looking back at stuff. You know, I'm a student of myself. You know, um, I may have even If you asked me seven years ago what I was doing, six years ago, I might say I was writing a memoir of growing up in Silicon Valley, 
kind of throwing the, you know, polite white male life that was set out for me in either management consulting or something else like that. Advertising is another one. Tech recruiting is another one. Um, you know, careers, and I'll, I'll quote Gore Vidal here. I like this quote. He says, I've, I threw, threw out a number of successful careers out of boredom. Um, and I mean, for me, you know, and again, I, I had careers in, in marketing and recruiting of about three years each. Marketing was maybe four or five, you could say. Um, I couldn't live in a hierarchy. I couldn't live in a role. I, I couldn't, you know, this whole work-life balance, you know, is a thing that um, you'll, you'll see in my, my writing kind of tears me up. Um, I can't put, you know, because writing for me is like the authentic voice and where it goes. It's the authentic voice of my inner life and how I process what I'm seeing. And I can't put that voice to the side and then speak another voice. It's like, well, I have to speak that voice. Um, which, you know, can be inconvenient, but it's not anymore because I've realized that I just have to go do that no matter how you do it, right? And it's like, I, you get to try a lot of methods, you know, because there's no one final form, right? There's no one you know, personal website that's going to um, bring it all together and be the thing. Because again, like once that's done, I don't want to go do it, right? There's no perfect plan to go hammer out as far as what my topics are, um, what my consulting services are, what my seminars, classes, lectures, group sessions, coaching, like all that stuff. I mean, I, I could like push the button and go launch it, um, but I write the next thing. I say the next thing. I think the next thing. Um, and frankly, I mean, I'm, I'm so used to my free, scholarly, monkish day of wake up, stretch on a yoga mat, write longhand morning pages and then coffee, breakfast, and computer for three, four, five or more hours. Um, writing new stuff, reading stuff, working on old stuff, doing edits on old stuff, um, letting inspiration come. I guess you could say, even though I, I do kind of go after it and get after it. And it's like the only thing worse than writing is not writing. Um, so it's like, well, I sit there and not writing is not satisfying. And you know what? Some, some days you just have to sit there and let nothing happen. And it's not fun and it's not whimsical and it's not playful and it's not funny. Um, it's very serious soul work. And when I say soul work, you know, I'm looking at a star right now and I, I talk about the cosmos all the time. And you really just got to totally eliminate all ego, all identity, empty your mind, empty your whole self. And go back to being nothing and and start all 